living the advent hope. This quarter, the Sabbath School study is challenging our theoretical Christianity in how it manifests practically. And this week we are looking at what was in the core of the Adventist movement and how we are living it today. And probably you're asking yourselves, what does the Advent hope has in common with us taking care for the poor and forgotten, which is, has been our primary focus for the past quarterly study. So how about today we remind ourselves, what is Advent hope all about? It's all in this desire and expectation for Jesus to come back. Our world is broken and it can just be stitched and repaired. It needs a major redo. God, our Creator, is the only one who can do it. And Jesus gained the right to save those who want and accept to be saved. We can't wait for this moment, but what do we do until then? How do we live? The first Adventist sold everything and waited. Well, apparently this was not the answer. And it seems that we still struggle to find the right approach. We can focus too much on doomsday or focus on this type of figurative boot camps to prepare and strengthen our characters to make us more worth it for the new kingdom, the new world. But are we missing the point? This new world that God is going to restore is in the future, but this future should transform our present. The Bible tells us the story of another kingdom that exists beyond the, our ability to be even able to register it with our five senses. Jesus came to testify with his own life and made it clear that this kingdom exists among us. However, does that mean that we live in this kingdom now? No. In this reality of things around us, there is still pain, there is suffering, there is oppression. So our hope as Adventists is that one day we will live in this kingdom that God, that Jesus promised will establish as a dominating power. So how long until Jesus comes again is the question that the Adventists are asking. This how long of Lord that the lesson focuses on is not so much a question, it's a cry. It's a cry for justice, cry for this misery to end. So many are crying today. So many of us are hurting. We say that we have hope. And yet we say at the same time, sometimes, as the lesson points, to the oppressed and the poor to just accept their sad lot. Because when Jesus comes, then it will all be made right. The faith and hope born and sustained by Jesus means much more than that. The order of things in this new kingdom will be different from disorder to a righteous kind of kingdom. An Adventist belief and hope that things in life will be empowered differently than here and now. Jesus himself started this new way of life that is to be lived by any of his followers. And walking in his footsteps is a very real thing. Helping and uplifting those who are in need is a very real thing. It is a foretasting, tasting for tasting of this new reality. So what is this Advent hope? It is in this expectation of the promised new world where there will be no sin anymore, no evil. This is big. But it's also in sharing this same hope, catering it, catering it to those who hurt and cry. It's radical because it's a completely different perspective that we all need. And there is no maybe here. It's a certain kind of hope. Somehow the kingdom that Jesus talked about, this new kingdom, would not be possible if few things don't come, come true or work out. And the first one is the resurrection from the death. The same way the disciples lost their hopes, they lost their dreams when they saw Jesus on the cross, the same way we don't have hope if there is no resurrection. The eleventh saw him risen from the dead. They saw him alive after the crucifixion. They saw him ascending into heaven. Hope 
was alive again. And second thing that has to work out for the kingdom to come, that we Adventists believe is a judgment. A judgment is a hope for justice. It's a hope for making things right, hope for a new system of life. And as Adventists, those two, a resurrection and a judgment, are very dear hopes for us because they make this coming of this new kingdom worthwhile waiting and longing for. And not only for us, but for every person who has been oppressed, poor, hungry, and forgotten. People, especially those hurting, need hope. But a hope that makes sense, hope that makes a difference. Understanding the victory of Jesus, realizing his love and dedication to us, his conquer over death, his judgment and justice, this brings a different peace and confidence in what we are going through. Living and sharing this hope while expecting Jesus' return, this is our purpose and mission. At the end, the Bible promises that God will wipe every tear from our eyes. Pain will be gone. <coughs> Suffering will be forgotten. And the Bible, even Revelation, talks about a healing process that will happen through the leaves of the tree of life. Until then, can we start living this new way of life here and now in this world? And the answer is yes. Jesus gave us an example. We just have to follow in his footsteps in helping and uh, uplifting, loving those who don't even deserve it but need it. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. An amazing, caring and personal touch from God. Can we be his hands and heart until he comes? We'll continue next week with the lesson to love mercy. <laughs>